Looks good. Well, Ben, uh, actor Ben Affleck agreed to have his ancestry examined on the PBS genealogy series called Finding Your Roots with Henry Louis Gates Jr. He was proud to discuss his family's civil rights credentials. His mother, in fact, was a freedom writer. A lynch mob made up of members of the Klan and the local sheriff's department pulled over three of Ben's mom's fellow activists, Andrew Goodman, James Cheney, and Michael Schwerner. They tortured Cheney, a black man, and then shot all three to death at close range. This is not some abstract threat. The Klan actually murdered these three freedom riders, and your mother was there at that time. I, I think it's incredible. This is why I have tremendous respect for, like, battling through, pushing through, dealing with adversity. And that example of a commitment to social justice that my mother set for us uh, has, has stayed with me. But what he failed to mention is that his lineage includes a slave owner. Affleck is now at the center of a controversy because he urged the show's producers to delete that information. Earlier I spoke to, spoke to Arise Entertainment 360 co-host Shannon Lanier, Lanier to discuss the controversy. Shannon, good to see you again on Thank Arise America. You. Thank Always you love having me. you here. So you've written an essay about this issue of Ben Affleck, we now know, has asked, asked PBS and Dr. Henry Louis Gates to remove one of his ancestors from his biography because the ancestor was a slave owner. Mm -hmm. Let's start here. What was your gut reaction when you heard the story? Disappointment. We have to stop censoring history. You have to take the good, the bad, and the ugly. It is who you are, and it's made you who you are today. So I think they really really just missed out on an opportunity to help other people that may be going through those same emotions that he may have been feeling when he found out that news. Maybe sometimes people are just too afraid that people are going to blame them or hold them accountable, ask them for reparations because of what their ancestors did in the past, but you're not responsible for their actions. You, and you say in this essay that it is a missed opportunity. What do you think the mm -hmm. conversation should be around this? It could have been, what are you feeling, Ben? How, what's going through your mind right now? How do you feel? What is causing those emotions? And it could have helped a lot of other people deal with this same information. It could have been an opportunity for them to educate people about slavery, to educate people about finding out how many others out there in America have a past linked to slavery and slave ownership. If people do a little bit of research, they may find out that they're more linked to slavery, slave owners, than anything else in this country. So uh, people should just start digging. And when they do start digging, they're going to have those emotions of pain, of anger, of guilt, you know? And they should own those feelings because that is part of them, but they also need help getting past those feelings, dealing with those emotions, dealing with that to get to a place of healing. And I think that's why the country is going through so much racial unrest now, because it hasn't had a full opportunity to heal. So many times we try to hide this information or act like it never happened instead of addressing it and then moving to a place of healing. Well, let me ask you about this, because some would say in response mm -hmm. to what you're saying is it's the past. Let the past stay in the past. It's over. And let's move forward. Let's mm -hmm. stop looking back. What do you say in response? Everything in the dark shall come to light, and if you keep it in the dark, it will find a way back. So in order to not make some to not make some of the same mistakes that we've made in the past, we have to address it, we have to recognize it, we have to see what happened, and then learn from those mistakes, learn from the process and the issues that have happened or worked or didn't work in the past, so we can become a more unified country. Do you think this is going to mar in any way the credibility, the reputation of Skip Gates in this series? I think some people are looking at the show in a different light at this point. They're thinking about the, the you know, the ethics behind what they're doing, the authenticity of the information that they're giving. Some people may look at the show now and say, okay, so what are they living out this time? You know, and start looking at it like that. PBS is a hallmark place to go for the truth, the place that they should use as a way to shine light on these issues and not to, you know, hide them under the covers. And I think that's what they've been known for. Hopefully they'll get back to that credibility that they had in the past as soon as they get past this situation. You said your first gut reaction was disappointment. Mm -hmm. But you yeah. know what? I was surprised. Mm -hmm. I was surprised that PBS would agree to do this. Right. You know, there's a strong journalistic e ethic mm -hmm. about not censoring, about mm -hmm. not uh, uh, editing, at least uh, at the behest of the, the source of the, of the story. And, their defense, and that Skip Gates that would agree to it. Yeah, but in their defense, they said that they did not agree to it based on Ben Affleck's request. That They said that there were stronger stories 
in his in his line and the information that they found out about him that were better for te television that show. That might very well Maybe be, it but convenient. it seems mighty I mean, convenient. <laughs> That's the word I think exactly, of, too. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And, of course, Time Magazine has mm -hmm. asked you to write this essay, mm -hmm. and you feel very strongly because mm -hmm. you have uh, a, a really fascinating <laughs> uh, ancestry. Yeah. Tell people more about your own bloodline. Okay, well, I'm a ninth-generation descendant of Thomas Jefferson and his slave Sally Hemings, so I know very well what it's like to find out a little bit more about your your past and your history and I've you know done a lot of research and fortunately I've had a lot of historians help me and oral historians you know genealogists help me with the research that I did for my book Jefferson's Children the story of one American family and my co-author Jane Feldman and I toured around the world interviewing various branches of Jefferson's family to find out what their stories were like for those people who found out that they actually are black and people who found out that their family member was a slave owner or that their family member was a slave all those stories are intertwined in our story, Let me in our ask book. you this on a personal level. Mm -hmm. What does knowing your ancestry, knowing that you come from the descendants of Sally Hemming mm -hmm. and Thomas Jefferson, what difference does that make to how you see yourself and life now? I think it gives me a foundation to stand upon for when, especially those hard days when I'm complaining and I'm like, oh my gosh, I have to go through this. I'm like, my ancestors were slaves. They went through so much more than I have to go through. They went through so much more than, and they had a lot less than I have today. And a lot of them, they didn't complain. They sang their hymns and they did their work and they survived. Well, let me I ask come you from a family because, of survivors. Yes, because many of us, most mm -hmm. of us, African Americans are descendants of slaves. Mm -hmm. There are some people whose ancestors came to this country free. Right. Most of us are descendants of slaves. Mm -hmm. So I understand that part of it. Does it make any difference that mm -hmm. you're a descendant of a mother who was a slave mm -hmm. and, a, and a father who was a slave owner, not to mention a father of this country? You know, I didn't really Everyone always asked me, did you benefit financially from it? I didn't benefit financially from it. He was broke when he died. He was in a lot of debt. So for me, that it didn't change me in that aspect. It gives me a better sense of who I am, and I have more pride in my family knowing what they've gone through and where they come from. But I think it just makes me more of an American, because if people start digging, they may find out that they have the same exact background that I have, just may not be linked to a president. But a lot of that relationship just shines light and adds as a catalyst for discussion on issues like this one, that people can move to a place of healing and reconciliation if they address it. And that's what Ben Affleck should try to do more of, addressing it moving forward. Maybe PBS can do a second part story on him and for finding our roots and address it more head on. They're for, certainly getting a lot of attention for it. We'll yeah, leave it right there for now. Shannon Lanier, as always, thank you very much. No problem. See you. And just a little interesting footnote to this story. The reason we even know that Ben Affleck asked PBS and Skip Gates to uh, remove or leave out his ancestor that owned slaves was because it was a part of the emails that were leaked when Sony was hacked by North Korea. So no telling what else we'll learn. That's gonna do it for us today. Thank you so much for joining Arise America. We'll see you tomorrow for another edition. I'm Debbie Turner-Bell, bye-bye.